It's already being positioned as the it book of the spring summer season, and I'm expecting a full court press of marketing hype and internet buzz behind this. Honestly, it feels like it's been fashioned in some fiction Frankenstein lab specifically to generate interest in the small bookish corner of the internet. Though I do wonder if normies will gravitate as much to it. I mean, if you've never heard of A Court of Thorn and Roses, dick soap. French Watermelon 19 is a cringy self-insert for Poland bananas, just word salad to you, and you've never debate the merits of bookish consumerism while also color coordinating the books on your shelves, your mileage might vary. I'm, of course, talking about Arf Kwong's Yellow Face, which is a far cry from her previous novel, The Dark Academia Colonizer, brick of a TikTok fave that was Babel, with its complex and clever magic system made to appeal to logophiles and its expansive cast of characters, which not for nothing was released less than a year ago. I mean, Yellow Face must have come out fully formed straight from Kong's head. Anyway, let's get into it. June Haywood and Athena Liu are two aspiring writers that went to school together and debuted their first novel at around the same time. June's Over the Sycamore fizzled into obscurity, but Athena Liu's debut was a, a profound success. She got a six-figure deal over at Penguin Random House and fawning profiles over at The New Yorker and The New York Times, sending her into the bookish stratosphere. While June manages to sell a meager 2,000 copies of a book that never quite gets to paperback, Athena is talking adaptation rights with Netflix. Now, despite their wildly divergent fortunes, the two remain in contact, and as the book opens, June finds herself at Athena's apartment when she dies in a freak accident. In the apartment is also a just-finished manuscript of Athena's talking about Chinese laborers during World War I. Now, part of Athena's process is that she doesn't talk at all to anyone about what she's working on until that first manuscript is finished. That means no one knows this thing exists. And so that manuscript ends up in June's bag. And from there, it's one bad decision after another. June polishes it up, submits it as her own. June Haywood becomes the ethnically ambiguous Juniper Song, and The Last Front is released to critical acclaim and reaches bestseller status. June is channeling some big main character energy here, and she comes off as a calculating capitalist basic white girl, without becoming completely unsympathetic. She's not evil, she's just a little oblivious, a tad entitled, and simply a byproduct of the publishing machine. A machine that's in for some serious skewering here in the books. Now, much like you don't have to have watched every single Spider-Man or all the prior Marvel movies to enjoy Spider-Man No Way Home, there's a lot of Easter eggs and callbacks for those who do. Same goes here. Normies totally will get the book, but those of us steeped in bookish internet lore will recognize some of the real-world industry tea that's being spilled here, or at least be reminded some of its greatest hits. So, if you've never heard of Electric Lit or Book Riot, both name-dropped here, and have never gotten mad at the Book Reads Choice Awards, I still think you'll get the gist of it. Because for those of us in the bookish corner of the internet, this all reads so deliciously familiar and it becomes all the more compelling coming from someone who has a bit of experience on the author's side. Kong released her debut, The Poppy War, the first of a fantasy trilogy when she was 20. It was a result of a bidding war, and the book would go on to make best of lists over at Paste, Time, The Washington Post, as well as The Guardian. Last year, Babel was a TikTok fave, and now we have Yellowface released as Kong is completing her PhD in East Asian Literature and Language at Yale. Kong isn't even 30 yet. While Kong certainly shares some similarities with bookish superstar Athena Liu, Kong is smart to leave some of those rough edges intact. Liu can come off as opportunistic, tone-deaf, imperious, and a little insufferable, while at the same time being publishing catnip as a Yale-educated, international, ambiguously queer woman of color. Of course, this inevitably makes her the target of extreme misogynistic hate because, of course, and then brings its own inevitable backlash. So be careful what you wish for, I guess, because things don't go any better for Juniper when her book rockets her to superstar status. I've already talked about Yellowfish and Publishing with my review of Disorientation a couple of videos back, where I talk about the shenanigans of people like Araki Yasuseda, otherwise known as Kent Johnson, Yifen Chu, Derek Michael Hudson, or Akira Yoshida, 
who is otherwise known as Chester B. Sobolski. What we have here in Yellowface isn't quite Mickey Rooney as Mr. Unioshi levels of egregious, more like Emma Stone as Alison Ng or Scarlett Johansson as Motoko Kusanagi. Now, when June Hayward becomes Juniper Song, I can't help but think of the real world author Lisa C, with also an ambiguously Asian sounding name, despite the fact that she looks like I demand to speak to the manager white. She's written books like Snowflower and the Secret Fan, The Tea Girl of Hummingbird Lane, Shanghai Girls, and China Dolls, which, when you say them out loud, seem a little extra, even if she were 100% Chinese. But considering how white she looks, seems just about right. Now, to be fair, Lisa C. claims that she is, in fact, one-eighth Chinese to justify her excessive Chinese output, which, fine, but doesn't really explain her latest novel, The Island of Sea Women, which explores the Henyo divers of Jeju, South Korea, which I have to admit I actually kind of liked. And then there's Juniper's publisher taking a very specific angle on the author biography, playing up her time traveling across Central Europe, South America, and across the United States with her father, the construction engineer, as well as her stint with the Peace Corps, a short stint as it were. This can't help but remind me of another real-world author, Janine Cummings of American Dirt fame, who got a million-dollar advance for a book, eventually became an Oprah Book Club pick, Talking about Mexican migrants, early on, press heavily implied the author's personal connection to the story, understanding with her husband being an illegal immigrant herself. All that, not a lie, but the reality was a little farther from what was implied. Janine's grandmother was Puerto Rican, and her husband was an Irish immigrant. Things didn't exactly go much better at the book launch event, where they thought barbed wire centerpieces were a good idea. Anyway, there's truth to the adage, there's no such thing as bad publicity. This hardly hurt the sales of the book, and the publisher increased the first run printing to half a million from the originally slated 300,000. The discourse around American dirt and the need for hashtag own voices reminds me of my boy Joseph Boyden, he of Arenda and Three Day Road fame, which I loved. I mean, Arenda is a five-star read for me. But it turns out Joseph Boyden is a pretendian, taking up space and speaking for a group that he's not even a member of. Hashtag all your faves are problematic. But controversy doesn't even have to come for you. In the book world, there is a tall poppy syndrome. As June Riley notes in the book, the more popular a book becomes, the more popular it is to hate on said book, which is why revulsion for Rupi Kaur's poetry has become a millennial personality trait. And authors simply have to roll with it. It's a losing game engaging with the haters, no matter how momentarily good and vindicating it can feel, like when June gets her revenge on a one-star Goodread review. It reminds me of a similar story in real life with Lauren Huff in her debut memoir, chastising a four-star review on Goodreads, calling him out as Goodreads assholes. No one likes you, f***ing nerds on a power trip, which led her to be book Twitter's main character of the month and people review bombing the memoir over on Goodreads. A similar fate awaits Juniper, who also manages to become the discourse of the moment, inciting her own Twitter storm with TikTok hot takes and booktube videos entitled Spilling the Tea on Juniper Song. Meanwhile, June is retweeting hot takes on Bubble Tea and BTS, intent on burnishing her image, bolstering sales, oblivious to her tendency towards microaggression. For racial authors, it gets even more complicated. Kong talks about, in the wake of the Georgia Spa shooting, her inbox was blowing up with editors looking to her to write a think piece about how traumatic it was to be an Asian woman, how her pain was the only interesting thing about her. Athena echoes that propensity for publishing to want to put her into an ethnic niche. And she will say things like, no one wants another feel-good immigrant story. Boo-hoo. Did your lunch smell bad? Did people make fun of your eyes? I mean... We've read it all before. There is no originality. She is not interested in writing another sob story for a white audience. Yellowface is in a weird space. It's sort of a, a normie airport read fashion as a publishing thriller with some deep cuts to appeal to more bookish online amongst us. It's a smart look at the world successful authors inhabit and the travails that they face. And not for nothing, I thought the ending was pitch perfect, at once cynical yet satisfying, because as I was reading it, I was beginning to worry she wasn't going to be able to land this thing. And 
Finally, I love how the discourse around the book as well as the author is likely to be just as divisive in the real world as it is on the page. All right, so there's Yellowface. Highly recommend. Go check it out. Anyway, my reading is completely off kilter. Last month found me in Portugal and then to New Orleans. Next month sees me in Calgary, London, England, Dublin, Ireland. My reading is completely off kilter. I am looking forward to the month of May, a solid block of routine and some regular reading. I'm really hoping to sink into some really good books, but otherwise it's going to be all over the place. So who knows when I'm going to see you next, but in the meantime, I hope you have a great week of reading and hopefully we'll talk to you again soon.